Welcome, I'm Tom, and I'm joined by Ollie and Rich for another squad profile on the 100 Cricket Tournament. On this episode, it'll be the turn of the Welsh Fire Men. So if you want to know whether I think Johnny Bairstow or Kyron Pollard is going to hit more sixes in this tournament, stick with us. It's going to be an interesting one. A warm welcome back to the 100 Club. Uh, this is another squad profile. We're getting through them. This is, uh, I think, the seventh team of our eight, uh, with only the Northern Superchargers to come after this. So we're getting there. Um, we have enjoyed reviewing the women's squad, but I feel like, Rich, you owe us uh, an explanation of who your Uncle Jeff is from that episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, referring to uh, your, your favourite astronaut or my favourite astronaut, uh, Jeff Bezos, the owner of... And he's your uncle. <laughs> he's oh. my uncle. <laughs> Why am I going to work? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Well, Let's, Jeff uh, Bezos. Yes. But Tom... Speaking yes. of uh, getting yourself presents in the post, you must be excited about the Welsh fire because this this is your lot, right? You've thrown your your hat in with the Welsh fire. I have, yes. I've said it publicly, so I'll say it again. The Welsh fire, I fancy them to win. I I like the look of their lineup, and I think they're um, they're going to be a really exciting team to watch as well. And Somerset and Glamorgan, old rivals, teaming up to uh, to fight the foe. It's a bit like sort of. Yeah. The Athenians and Spartans fighting the Persian invasion all those years ago. I'll take your word for that. I'm putting my sword down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm putting the rivalry to one side for this short 30 day period um, because I do think, you know, that they've got some of the, the talent. And obviously, most of the talent's coming from Somerset. That's fine. They'll accept that. <laughs> um, Just sort on, of badging listen. themselves as, as well for the. Just for a month. No, that, it, it is a, it's a well-balanced squad. And I suppose I'm going to start actually with um, with a player who hasn't got anything to do with any of that um, as the star <laughs> player, <laughs> um, which is perhaps unsurprisingly Johnny Bairstow. Um, Johnny yeah. Bairstow is my nominated star player for this one. When he scored a 1,000 T20 international runs, he got a 1,000 IPL runs uh, with the Sunrisers Hyderabad. Um, it, it, we know... We know he's awesome. We know he's awesome with the white ball. I, and I would personally have him in pretty much any dream 11 for a white ball format. Just a little bit of prejudice, perhaps. In 2019, for the Sunrisers Hyderabad, he averaged 55.62 in 10 games in the tournament. That's ridiculous in a T20 format. So we'll see how he gets on. 1,500 runs in the blast. Um, he's set the T10 record with an 84 off 24 balls for Kerala. Um, for me, he's, he's pretty awesome. Shot. Yeah. Don't, uh, yeah. I, think, I, think, I think he's going to have a bit, um, bit of a point to prove as well, because when they did the um, kind of the low, you know, the uh, local, you know, sort of red ball contract allocation initially, the, uh, the Northern superchargers based out of Leeds decided to, uh, to pick Ben Stokes ahead of him. So yeah. I imagine he'll kind of want to make sure that he kind of out, outperforms Ben Stokes in the uh, in this, just to uh, just, yeah. to, just to make a little reminder to the uh, to the folks. Well, I, I suppose with his test place under pressure, there's a chance mm -hmm. that he, he ends up playing the bulk of the tournament as well, which is an interesting well, look, one. And th the other thing, I was just, something, yeah. Sorry, go on. You know, I was just going to mention you. You talked a lot about his batting, and I think you need to mention as well that he's a pretty good wicket keeper, mm -hmm. and even when he doesn't have the gloves, he's an amazing outfielder as well. He's just a general. Mm -hmm beast of an athlete and and this is a great point i mean I, I i don't have him as the wicket keeper for this team i think this team have got four good wicket keeping options um and because Bairstow is so good in the outfield in the covers wherever you put him I, I i've got him out out doing that stuff out there um we'll see you might disagree with me on the keeping options but um I, i've got mm. someone else up there but on that mm. time uh it'll be you doing the selection today ollie mm. um who are you representing well, I've got to take on the mantra of um, of Gary Kirsten for this. Uh, I'm going to take on the mantra rather than the accent. You're much, yeah. much hairier <laughs> than Gary Kirsten as well. <laughs> well, I wish I had as many uh, many test runs as Gary Kirsten, yeah. to be honest. Um, obviously, you know, um, you know, we know him kind of from the from the you know his sort of test um, test career, but he's also been a very successful coach. Um, you know, so coached India to World Cup success in the um, in the ODI format. He's also had stints, you know, with South Africa. Um, 
I think there's currently talk going around at the moment that he might be in line to um, go to Pakistan as, the, as the, their next head coach. So um, he's definitely sort of said that he wants to stay involved in the um, in the international game. I think he's been doing a little bit of contracting and on the side for the Netherlands, trying to get them into the World Cup uh, through the next set of qualifying. So, um, so yeah, he sort of you know, definitely sort of wants to pursue his international coaching career, but has done um, been quite a bit in the... Um, Kind of the the franchise cricket around the world as well. So spells of the Hobart Hurricanes. He is, you know, like some feels like most of the coaches actually has had a spell at the Royal Challengers Bangalore in the yeah. in the IPL. Uh, so he was there after uh, after Daniel Vittori, you know, another coach that we profiled um, profiled earlier. Um, one of the things he's, he's actually I don't know if you've you've seen him talk about his time kind of in the IPL, but he said that um, the biggest challenge really was was trying to sort of forge an identity. You know, kind of in the team and you know, sort of a playing identity in kind of you know sort of short space of time with a disparate group of players. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I suppose you know contrasted with you know an international setup where you've kind of got you know you know sort of a you know a national shared identity and you know, a yeah. shared background, you know, shared experience to, you know, to kind of draw from. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so this is probably going to be a bit more like his kind of IPL experience where he's got you know sort of a you know group of players to kind of hone into a into a team in you know short short space of time. So. Um, so yeah, it'd be interesting to see how he goes. Um, this side that I guess is, you know, one of, you know, we've see, seen a couple of sides that, you know, sort of had a bit of flux, um, you know, between the, the initial dr- you know, draft and the, the you know, where we are now. Uh, you know, these guys made seven um, picks in the second second draft in, in 20, yeah. 2021. So they've, you know, they've done, you know, done a fair bit of chopping and changing already. They're 11, you know, another 15. So it'd be interesting to see kind of how they, how they actually go once they've got, <laughs> In what they pick but you guys are gonna to have to try and put together the uh the starting 11 based on the current squads um yeah you, and i mean there's a big there. squad it's a big squad because they've done something the other squads haven't done which is essentially find replacement overseas players when they're subbing in and mm. out so we'll see that in a minute i mean rich have you got um have you got someone you're keeping an eye on out of the out of the seventeen or so of them that we've got? I I do have somebody I'll keep an eye on, and um, in keeping with our our, our format, that is a youngster, <laughs> but it, actually he could almost be a star player at the same time as well. And that's uh, England's Tom Banton, um, twenty two years old. He's you know I'd say a fairly kind of regular member of the T Twenty international squad. I would certainly expect him to be on the plane to Abu Dhabi. Uh, well, I should say the UAE later in this year when England contests the World T20. Um, you know, he came through the Warwickshire Academy before moving to Somerset, I think, when he went down to King's School in Taunton. He transferred across. Uh, again, multi-sportsman. Uh, I think he played uh, up front for England at hockey under 17s and before deciding to you know, commit fully to cricket. And it was a bit of a meteoric success. I mean, he had an IPL contract by the age of tw- you know 20. Uh, and he went out and had a season with the uh, Kolkata Knight Riders. And I think he learned quite a lot from that because he only got two games. I don't think he did particularly well. I think he got 22 runs across the two of them and was released, you know, on the back of that. And he's played a bit of franchise cricket elsewhere, a bit of PSL, Quetta Gladiators, and he's been out with the, the Brisbane Heat as well. But he said to himself that I think he's decided that he needs to spend more time playing cricket and less time being on the franchise circuit and not necessarily getting the game time. He still has aspirations to play Red Bull cricket for England, you know, test mm. cricket for England. So um, I think that's actually done quite well for him this year. You know, he's had that time at Somerset and he's been going incredibly well in, in the blast, including a kind of a, an absolutely blistering 100 the other night against Kent. So yeah. be very much looking forward to see how he goes in this tournament. I mean, his, his early form in the season was patchy. And certainly in the county game, the Red Bull game here, he was really struggling. Um, he is having a bit of a comeback. Maybe he's just coming right for the 100. Um, so definitely looking forward to seeing him. The the other thing I'd say with it, you can definitely see the hockey player in him when you see when you see him. And I've obviously watched a lot of him with Somerset, but he has a three sixty game. And you talk about that as being really important in short format. But he can find a gap forward a square either side and back of a square on both sides. Really inventive mm. and quick thinking. Is it fair to say favors the leg side. Yeah. yeah, I think for preference. Yeah. Um, but he, he, that's not to say he can't reverse it, do all the trick shots. It, it's all there. Yeah. Um, and, and, and can carry the gloves. One of my four wicket keeping options. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I tell you, 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 it's an interesting point you made there about the sort of the, the, taking time off the franchise circuit. Of course, there's, there's one 
player who's never done that on this squad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to, to the point that he's joining after four games, um, and that's Kyron Pollard. Um, are we expecting peak Pollard for the hundred? Do we think? Well, if we get you know, if we get just sort of you know one or two innings of peak Pollard, then then it's going to be worth it, isn't it? Because he's you know he is box office. Yep. Um, I think we did a piece in one of our uh, one of our early shows about six hitting, and Pollard you know likes to likes to clear the ropes. I'm not sure he's a huge fan of doing that much running between the wickets. No. no but so, he, yeah, it's only March when he hit six sixes in an over, wasn't it, of course? Yeah, so yeah, he's that's, got four. That's, no, I think that's a bit unfair. I think he's quite an athletic guy. I think he he, he runs hard as well. Um, like, he's still bowling I think, as well. He is still yeah, bowling. Yeah, when, when, when he can bowl. I mean, obviously, he's between international series at the minute. Australia playing West Indies at, at the moment, and that's uh, that's what's going to keep him from the start of the tournament. But yeah, no, I think that well. would be... Yeah, I think it'll have a big impact when he comes over. And when I looked into it, um, when you look at the team strike rate, um, kind of the aggregate of you know mm. all, all their runs to, against their ball faced, the Pollard factor is quite significant. It sort of adds you know four runs to the team overall strike rate and takes them from the seventh rank in the tournament when you have you know Pollard mm. in, um, out out of the team. When you add Pollard into the mix, they then go to the second highest strike rate. So it's a quite a noticeable mm. improvement wow. when Pollard comes in. You know, such as the, the, the rate at which he scores. Wow. Okay, so the question will be how you get the most out of him when he when he does arrive, um, because by that point in the tournament, clearly they'll be about halfway through. They might need to to push for the final on the twenty first of August. Uh, that could be the difference. <laughs> we hope. Uh, <laughs> so, but I, I haven't got him opening, and I don't think that's a particularly controversial decision to not have him opening. Um, I've I've got Johnny Bairstow opening, unsurprisingly, yeah. perhaps. Yeah. Uh, with Tom Banton. I have exactly the same. Cool. Um, but I do, ha and this is going to be quite complicated, for, I think, for us to track, because when you've got ins and outs, we're going to have to work out where they might change the order here yeah. as well slightly. But yeah. I do have Glenn Phillips as number three for those first um, first few games. He's the New Zealander who's been going great guns, very athletic in the field. I don't know if you saw that catch uh, uh, in the past week. I did, yeah. Is it was it enough for him to get the gloves off you? I mean, this is, he was. This is quite a battle to uh, to keep for your side. I think, yeah. So far, yeah. No, actually, I am giving him the gloves when he's there. I think he's he's the right choice personally. But there you go. Um, but but in at three uh, and possibly replaced by Pollard, you could have him at three. The situational battle, anyway. Don't know how you feel about that. Yeah, I had the same for the first for the first four games. While Phillips is available. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So maybe we'll put it. Let's try and put up the the side as we sit for the first game of the tournament and then we can perhaps okay. talk about who we who we sub in. So you can leave Pollard. You're benching him. Benched for <laughs> well, you know, that's you know, yeah as okay. he's going to be. He's, he doesn't arrive in the country till Yeah. Until halfway uh, through the tournament. Well the, the other the other wrinkle to add at this point is that uh England's Ollie Pope uh mm. has a hamstring injury that he sustained last Friday. What I've read is that you know, it's kind of a race against time to see whether he's fit for the first test against India on the 4th, which for me suggests it's unlikely that he features mm. in the first few games. So in that case, I have Ben Duckett coming in at 4th, the uh, yeah. Nottingshire bat who is currently in the in the sort of <laughs> England 3rd <third> 11, <laughs> one, yes. one day set up playing Pakistan. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he, he's been pretty good in the, uh, in, in the last over the last few seasons. Um, so so yeah. I had him coming in at 4th. Okay, so Ollie Pope goes in the subs column, whatever that's going to be over yeah. there. Ben Duckett well, I, I had as the replacement for him, yeah, certainly. Yeah, and I think it's a real question now whether Pope is actually going to get to play in this this tournament because I, you know, will they, will they, will he be fit, you know, in turn to play in those early games? And if he's, if he's not, um, if he's even if he's not sort of playing in the, that test, you know, test side, you kind of imagine he's going to be in and around the squad. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, are, are the England setup going to risk having players coming in and out of the out of the team, given the kind of challenges they've had around COVID? It's. You know. Well, this is a good point. So, if if he comes out of the Test squad immediately once the game is over, so the game is fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. The next Welsh fire game is on the ninth, and there's another game then before the second Test starts, and then there's a game after the second Test. So, it's either he's going to play one game. 
potentially, or three games, depending mm. on fitness, of course, as well. Yeah. The uh, the Fire have available um, the New Zealand all rounder Jimmy Neesham for the first three mm. games, I believe, before um, uh, Lungi and Gidi arrives. But yeah. so I, I would have Neesham in at five when he's available for me. You know, you know, very good record both domestically and internationally. You know, he strikes nearly one sixty in mm. international T twenties. So I think he he bats in my top five. And uh, then I, I think maybe uh, sorry, Karen's on. Well, no, I had him at six. I don't know who who are you lining up next. I had uh, Ryan Higgins coming in at six for me. Okay. So who did you have, Tom? And your... Well, I had Josh Cobb actually in at five, followed by Nisham. Um, you've got the uh, match attacks card there for Josh Cobb. How's that <laughs> ranking him? <laughs> well, just I was just looking at the stats for Josh Cobb and Ryan Higgins, mm. and they've got a very similar record. Uh, you know, Cobb has played twice as many games, but you know their twenty twenty strike rates are, are exactly the same at one thirty three. So I just thought a bit of youthful experience and go for Ryan Higgins in that role ahead of Josh Cobb. I like Higgins. I do think he'll get some games, certainly, so I'm not going uh, to to fight you to the death for that one. Um, I mean, when Nisham goes, we have Lungi and Gidi as the, the bowling option replacement, but then either Cobb comes in for Nisham, perhaps, or Higgins moves up the order. So that that will have to be a, a replacement there, I think. Yeah, Nisham has been a bit expensive in the blast, um, and I don't think he's been necessarily bowling his full quota of overs for Essex. So, you know, I think he he has to do a job with the bat to justify his, his place mm. in the side. I wouldn't necessarily be playing him as a specialist bowler. Um, no, no, I, I wasn't suggesting that. But Lungi and Gidi certainly isn't going to be back. Yeah, absolutely, five. yes. Mm. Yeah, um, someone who could offer a bit of both, though, quite feasibly, I think, is Kais Ahmed, the Afghan, who I had in at seven. Uh, leg break bowler, um, quite experienced over here now. Has been playing the blast, doing all right, not setting the world on fire. I think it's fair to say, but um, I think if if you want, uh, you definitely want a bit of leg break, and I think that's a great option. There, he's the overseas uh, option. Yeah. Well, do you have him in your side, Rich? So yeah, I did have him in, in in my side. I had him batting slightly lower. I had the South African, well, Cole Pack all rounder. Uh, with a British passport, lose deploy. He was brought in as a wide card, wild card pick. Um, I quite like the idea of him, sort of as a kind of a, a batting all rounder uh, at seven, because you know, with the optionality of having a you know Nisham, Ahmed deploy, then I've still got you know three specialist spots for the bowlers as well. Um, yeah, I didn't have a spot for loose deploy, but I can see it working. I mean, he's pretty exciting and. Um, He's a little bit older than some of the other, or a little bit more experienced rather than some of the other wildcard picks. So I think a bit more of a, a known quantity. We've seen some of the other teams haven't necessarily, or in our opinion, pick someone who's going to play every game. He he might be someone, I think. Yeah, I think uh, some people have sort of gone for gone for youth, haven't they? Just yeah. you know, getting picking up sort of the young talent, you know, for sort of a bit of this tournament, but possibly in the future, future of a, you know, versions. Whereas um, yeah, I think you're probably right. It just feels like they've actually picked somebody on based on current form just to actually get a get a starting spot. And yeah. that was the first time I really thought about it when we were talking to Dan West and, and his 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 comment that they were looking to build you know for multiple seasons, you know, building building a team, not just sort of for one tournament. So I kind of guess yeah. that that makes sense in that regard. Mm. I'm not quite sure why I'm moving uh, Karen Poll around there. Sorry. <laughs> just <laughs> does. <laughs> You're just um, tracking his movements across have, the globe from one, one franchise corner of this board to another. <laughs> have we gone for the same um, bowling lineup? Yeah, I have. Bowling. Unlikely, because I've got four spots left in my team. Okay, well, um, I, have, yeah. I have Plunkett, Payne, and Critchley in my starting 11. Okay. Well, I've got all of them games. and Jake Ball. Okay. Um, which order do you want them? I had Critchley, Plunkett, Payne, Ball. Uh, I had Plunkett. Sounds ahead. like a it sounds like a law firm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, could do you quite a bit of damage. That there's some, there's some good pace in there. Uh, they're not short of quick options. The fire. Yeah. Certainly, some, someone like Payne, Ball, and and Plunkett. Mm. Yeah, Jake, getting Jake, around ninety. Yeah, Jake Ball, who who was in the test team. Probably four or five years back, but you yeah. know, it's been a fairly solid county performer since. And uh, David Payne, uh, again, another one like Duck, um, Duckett, who's in the sort of the England thirds at the minute. Uh, I don't think he's got a game yet, but I imagine he will. Um, 
later yeah. this week. You know, very canny, uh, left arm quick. He's done well for, for Gloucester over the years. Yeah, and um, I mean, there is options though. So Quitchley's bowling is um, the spin as well. So there's a bit of variety there. What we haven't done is we haven't found... Uh, so who who haven't we taken? Cobain and Lloyd. Is that is that are we in agreement there? Yeah, I think Cobain's the backup bat, and Lloyd the backup bowler. Yeah. Okay. But we, I think we Lloyd was have... in the bottom pay band, certainly, we... if you want to take that as a, an indication. But we do have twelve there, so I think yeah, so we uh, still got... uh, I no think gaps our in this field. Is, it's probably that. around lose deploy and Ryan Higgins, isn't it? That's probably you know, it's one of those to miss out. Yeah, what do you like for balance wise, Ollie? Yeah, so it looks quite bowler heavy to me. It does look very bowler heavy, uh, and quite quite pace bowler heavy, I'd say. Hmm. Well, we mentioned so, it in the in the last one though. That you got to remember these guys are going to be playing half their games at uh, Sophia Gardens. Um, traditionally, can be quite difficult to score off if you're giving a lot of variety. So, bowling options are good, I think, for this team. And also remember that Liam Plunkett hits over 130. Uh, Case yeah. Armid hits over 120. You know, so these guys are coming in relatively low down, but they're still going to give it a whack. And in a shorter mm -hmm. form game, you know, that's going to be going to be useful, useful batters. I think I would put them more. I would almost put them more in all round category than than straight bowlers. Straight they bowlers. Yeah, listed yeah. There. certainly is. Um... Yeah, well, that's the hundred club website. Uh, sorry, the hundred website, not our website. <laughs> <laughs> We're not that organised. <laughs> Uh, well, it's decision time, Molly. Well, so maybe let's uh, maybe let's uh, take uh, take ball out. Uh, oh. <laughs> so essentially, you've gone with Rich's team. Yeah, basically. <laughs> what a load of rubbish! <laughs> <laughs> but this is only the this is only team uh, you know match day one team. Yeah, yeah. Obviously. So. It all um, you know, got to throw the cards up in the air again. Yeah. So all if right, you take so we're, yeah, so we're four games into the, the tournament, what happens? Yeah, yeah. Well, this this let me just read this one out again in case people. All right. Yeah. The please do. So this is yeah. Banton, Bairstow, Phillips, Duckett, Nisham, Higgins, Deploy, Ahmed, uh, Plunkett, Critchley, Payne, subbing in potentially. Pope, Pollard, and Geedy. Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah. But we know, so Phillips has to come out. As does Nisham. Nisham has to come out. So are we replacing them like for like with Pope and Pollard? Well, I'm just not sure how many games Pope's going to play. So I think okay. I'm not sure we can make that assumption. Okay, well, if it's not him, then it's uh, Josh Cobb. Yeah, so I think actually we might be looking at Cobb coming into the batting lineup. Okay. But if we have it like that, so the moment, so Pope Pope still misses out, then you have Cobb coming in. I quite liked your idea of having having Pollard in at three or four. I think that's that what makes doing sense. It. You make what I've got to win, sure what's, win something it. today. <laughs> All right, okay, so there it, well, and then we who's 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 I presume Ngidi's coming in. Lungi Truman in Ngidi. That's yeah. his middle name. Yeah. Great middle so, name. Uh, it, it, it might be that he's going to um, relieve possibly David Payne on my on my lineup. Then, what do you think? Yeah, possibly. Depends. You know, the form might just keep him out because Lungi and Gidi can be quite expensive. I think I would probably keep a left armor in my side, and I would think it would probably deploy would miss out. Okay. Well, I'm all over the shop there. Okay, so let me let me read that out again then. So, are you happy with it, Ollie? Yeah, that uh, whether whether Payne's going to suddenly get promoted up the order like that. No, yeah, that looks more like it. <laughs> okay, so that, that <laughs> he's, it, he's gone from being dropped to uh, <laughs> to batting at, batting at six. <laughs> <laughs> give me a minute. It takes me a while to sort this out. Let me read it out again. So, the second half of the tournament, if we're saying uh, Pope is out. Might yeah, this be. is assuming Pope's you know injured, Pope or, is injured. Or, or playing for England. Yeah, which is fair. So Banton, Bairstow, Pollard, Duckett, Cobb, Higgins, Ahmed, Critchley, Plunkett, Payne, and Geedy. Now, tell me I'm wrong, but I think that is really strong. 
It is. And it does sound like Critchley, Plunkett and Payne have opened up a Durban office <laughs> and promoted Lungi and Yidi to partner yeah. in the law firm. Um, <laughs> Uh, I don't know which which half of the if you if you had to buy a ticket for the Welsh fire would you go in the first half of the season or the second half? That's a good question. It's a good question. Though. Second half, still, yeah. I think uh, I want to see Pollard play. Uh, who doesn't want to see Karen Pollard play? No, That's the true. question you should be asking yourself. Okay, okay. so. Anyone who owns a car park near Sapphire Gardens. <laughs> <laughs> Canoe it it's in the river path. <laughs> yeah, okay. So uh, I think they're really strong. I think they're really strong. And um, we will have to see how they get on. When's their first game? Is that the f uh, 25th? They'll be on the Saturday, yeah. Saturday. So the 24th. 24th, okay. So first game then, um, their local rivals being the Southern Brave. So they'll get two games against that lot. So there'll be some interesting um, interesting uh, matchups with those games because you're going to have Andre Russell versus mm. Kyron Pollard. Yeah, so, that sounds tasty. Which kind of leads me to my final question is, who is going to hit the most sixes in this tournament? Any ideas? Hmm. Putting me on the spot there. If, yeah, if sorry. It, if, if Pollard had a full, <laughs> full set of games, then yeah. history would suggest you know Pollard would be a good bet. But hmm. I'm not sure he's going to do it in four games plus. If he know, does, it'll final. be remarkable. It, it will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think well, Besto is a reasonable bet. Hits a lot of sixes, playing at a small ground. Um, other than that, I mean, obviously Dre Russ. Jerry Russ is, is, is similar to Pollard. He's not going to be around for the whole tournament as well. Yeah. Jason Roy, Alex Hales. Hales going to be in and around a good there. shout. Yeah, he's going to play it all. Mm. Okay, I'll leave you to ponder on that one. Um, but I guess it, it, viewers, if you have a view, put it in the comments below. And we'll, we will be covering that in our predictions episode, right? Mm. Yeah, so later. Yeah, before before the tournament starts on the 24th of, uh, 21st of July, we will do the grand predictions, put your neck on the line, <laughs> it all in. Uh, Those are grand's predictions. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey Boycott's grand's rhubarb yeah. stick predictions. Uh, no. Okay, so that's, that, that's something to look forward to. Um, put your comments down below. Ollie's got it right. We need to know what your opinion is on this. And uh, thank you for watching us and joining in this discussion again. We have a lot of fun doing it. It's really appreciated. Give us a subscribe. And we'll see you again next time. Who are we doing next time? The we can only have one left. Superchargers. Uh, Northerners. Northerners, then, right. The last lot. And then, and then we're doing the Quetta Gladiators. Oh, no, that's the PSL. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you, are, you are making promises that my wife won't enjoy. Uh, <laughs> you're committing to at this point. But that's fine. We'll catch you then for the Northern Superchargers. Thank you very much for joining us. Rich, Ollie, it's been a pleasure. Take care, Bye. everyone.